was one change from the lineup at uh, Extra Bordeaux last time out, some six months ago. Andre Hager dropping out of the field. Billy Green comes in as the wild card in Andorra tonight. And Billy Green will be the first rider out through the sections. Lois Grant, of course, as it is his X Trial World Championship debut. Great to have him in the lineup tonight. Billy Green really has earned his stripes working his way through the ranks in FIM Comp. <laughs> So no doubt he deserves his shot at this level. Each rider will have two runs as always, round one, just about to get underway. Five sections and five minutes on the board. And then a second round again, comprising five sections with a few changes. Underway then with section one. Two marks straight away from Billy Green. One for landing the bike on the sub and one for the dab of the right foot. Another step to make here to the highest point in this section one. It's wooden crate and Billy Green is down. It's a five mark score in section one. A few nerves, but it is a fiasco nonetheless. Here, Green's opening ride. Very limited top flight experience for Billy Green. His teammate to Toby Martin in the Trial of Nations in France this summer. Great Britain finishing fourth there and well back from the podium on that occasion. Brits certainly trying to recover form of the past. Billy Green just getting caught there between the A-frame and uh, the first module, which again he climbed up well. A little bit of work on the back tyre, but uh, Rockwell slipping forward. Couldn't make the bridge and continue on through that section too. So a flagging start for Billy Green, to be honest. Crowd getting behind him, up against it on his World Championship debut, but also as the first rider out through the sections, of course. Now this is a challenging step for Billy Green. Section three, midway now through his run. Plenty of time in hand with those two early failures. And it's another one for Billy Green in section three. That's about 15 marks more then from three. Always was looking at pretty mean start to that set. Third section for Green. Making his extra debut tonight. Did compete in the non championship Ingolstadt indoor trial in 2020. Like Teo Colero and Sondre Hagar on the podium that night. And both since made their extra world championship debut. So something of a pipeline beginning to develop. The riders knocking on the door of top flight competition. But it is such a massive step up from trial two to the extra world championship. Billy Green is demonstrating here. Tough start for him. Up he goes, but crashes down from the first step of section four. So just one section remains. Billy Green to try and spare his blushes. Moving to the side now of the arena. It looks like being a change of bike for him. He's got two minutes 20 to make that change. Two brand new bikes set uh, in competition for the first time tonight. Green was telling me earlier on. Came over to Spain midweek to make uh, first contact and still trying to understand the setups on them. He's going to be heading out to Estonia to ride soon and then uh, some French Open trials at the start of 2024. So hoping to get a proper indoor season in regardless of his performance tonight. Section five thus far looking a little bit more accessible for Billy Green. Just this staircase to climb or a finish on the main platform of his extra Andorra La Vella course. Green tumbles back, but he's still got one foot on the bike, enough to jump back. Will have accrued a, uh, a mark there.
Again, getting stuck near the top of that staircase. Right foot this time goes down. That's a second mark then for Billy Green. Trying to haul the bike forward. Yes. Right foot now down as well, and that's game over. Accumulation of marks for footing for Billy Green. So it's a maximum score. And as a result of a five mark score in the final section, that'll be a maximum on time as well. So uh, Billy Green making a tough start to his X trial World Championship debut. The 21 year old walks away with a 25 mark maximum score for the five sections in Andorra La Vella tonight. Next up will be Matteo Gratarola. Eighth and last at both Extra Barcelona and Pamplona. Only beat uh, wildcard Marco Mempo in Wiener Neustadt. Sixth at Extra Bordeaux, his best so far in 2023. Really a poor win turner. It was a poor start to the summer as well for Gratarola. Underwhelming at trial GPs in Spain and Japan, but uh, his results instantly better on his return to the Italian manufacturer, Beta. Never out of the top five, not four podiums in the remainder of the campaign. So expecting him to be back among the front runners here tonight. Makes the first step onto the first crate successfully, Matteo Gratarola. Just balancing him for the second, which is where Billy Green fell. First rider out. Up goes Gratarola. Takes a mark for leaning. Some just resting on the crates, of course, those sharp edges, the uh, corners of those crates. Encouraging the riders to drop marks as they make their way through. Gratarola then poising himself for uncharted territory. Billy Green didn't get this far in section one. Matteo Gratarola, though, has. It's another mark for leaning. And it's a two mark score in section number one. Solid start for Gratarola, who Hasn't had the best of build-ups to X-Trial Andorra La Vella. He's uh, had some sickness over the last week. Uh, he's telling me he had, had a fever as recently as Wednesday. So hasn't really been properly back on X-Trial sections. Happy to be back with the team, though, that he knows so well. And that confidence, the main difference, it seems, rather than necessarily the bike itself. Foot there taken by Matteo Gratarola. Wasn't a confident start to the section. He's got his balance now. Should be able to make this leap and then the ramp the other side. Riders, I believe, are required to drop down the other side of the ramp that you can currently see. Nicely bridged there by Matteo Gratarola. Now leaps across. Lands it nicely. And there's the drop down. Riders not allowed to fly straight to the end of the course. They must touch that module. But it doesn't stop Gratarola anyway. And he is through with just a single mark in section two. Still with three minutes on the clock for the three remaining sections, Matteo Gratarola. Rushing straight in to the next one, section three. Those first three modular islands. Billy Green managed those okay, just a, a technical challenge rather than outright performance. Now this is the big one. Two eight frames to make it up. Gratarola's down at the first. Off the back of the bike for a first failure of his first run. Eight marks then from three sections. Guaranteed to finish ahead of Billy Green in this round one. So he won't have to go out to first in round two. Section four. Big step to start us off. Gratarola is up, but then Tita's backwards and down he goes. Another five. Back-to-back -back failures then for Matteo Gratarola. Section five still to come. Billy Green only fell at the final hurdle. Four steps to make it up. Matteo Gratarola. A few ghosts for him to put to bed tonight because of that underwhelming start to 2023. Had a stinker here last year as well. Lost out on an opportunity to take the FIM bronze, finished just seventh that night, and his rival, Jaime Busto, won. Gratarola, realistically, just targeting some podiums, I think, at the end of this season. Fifth overall might be within reach. 
for Matteo Grattarola, who currently sits eighth. And he's down and off the back of the bike as well. Makes it through to the end of the section just to prove that he was capable of completing a course. Sets himself up for that same section come the second round. He knows what he's going to need to do differently then. That's a high scoring first run for Matteo Grattarola. 18 marks is his tally. Next onto the arena floor is Annie Old Jellabert, the 23 year old. Certainly come a long way since his ex trial debut at Granada in 2019. He's uh, had two more seasons at trial two level before stepping up to the top flight full time in 2022. This season, his second with Beta. Really looks to have closed the gap to the big four. Very consistent throughout the summer, Annie Old Jellabert. He certainly grabbed his ex-trial call-up with both hands as well, looking to make his case for a return in 2024 via these final rounds. 18 marks the target score set by Matteo Grattarola. Billy Green scored a maximum 25. First step completed, second step a greater challenge. Here he goes, landed on the sump. Just a single mark. Close to uh, being caught by the assistant there. Was teetering for a moment, but uh, gathers himself up nicely. Now, this is the next challenge. Another great step. Annie Ogelabet, beta factory rider in 2023. Again, a mark for leaning. Matteo Grattarola, though, got through this section with two. Looks like it's uh, three given by Jordi Sanchez, the section observer for Annie Old Jellabert. We'll wait for official confirmation. That looks indeed to be the case. So three marks for Jellabert in section one. That's one behind Matteo Grattarola at the same stage. In now to section two. Easily straight up to the first A frame by pushing through confidently and with speed. He reduced the chances of errors there. But landing it the other side, he takes a mark for footing. Right foot going down. One more step to come. Annie Old Jellabert, third rider out through the sections this evening. 18 marks, the target total. Good work in the end from Jellabert in section two. So if he wants to remain ahead of Matteo Grattarola in the seeding order for the second round tonight, he needs to get through one of the three remaining sections. Matteo Grattarola failed all three of them. Here we go then for Annie Olgelabert, fifth place in Wiener Neustadt, his best results of the season so far. Sixth in Pamplona, eighth in Bordeaux just before the summer break and obviously was forced to sit out the opening round of the season. Drop round regulations are certainly going to work in his favour later on in the campaign. Needs a good run of results though from here on in. Beautifully done on the way up, but it's down for a five. Once again in section three, nobody's made it through there as yet. So on to section four, a mark behind where Matteo Grattarola was at the same stage. And the old Jalabert beaten by Grattarola in at Bordeaux before the summer break. Comfortably had the edge over the Italian in Austria and Spain. It's a failure right at the start of section four, though. 14 marks now for Annie Old Jellabert. So unless he gets through this final section, he will slip behind Matteo Grattarola in the pecking order. I think it was an unforced error from Grattarola at the end of this section five. He proved that it was achievable by getting it done at the second attempt. So Annie Old Jellabert just needs to keep a cool head here. And he has every chance of moving above Grattarola in the standings at the end of round number one. Grattarola 18, green 25. Big leap there from Jellabert, tries a different line. Doesn't want to go from the bottom of the steps. So he's definitely going to have taken a mark for leaning. Left foot goes down, so that's two marks. And Aniel Jellabert is home and dry. Wonder whether there might have been a third in there to haul the bike up as well. But he has beaten Matteo Grattarola. It is just the two marks. It's 16 the score. 
So Jella Bear 16, Gratarola 18, Billy Green 25. Section three of four, just as he got over the highest point in the section, couldn't land it the other side. And then section four, the first step of that section, straight down. Jella Bear at least uh, banking some time. First rider successfully through in section number five. First three riders then have completed their runs. Billy Green was first up. Five failures out of five though for the Brits. Matteo Gratarola second through. 18 mark score with three failures in a row. Aniel Jalabert making the difference in the last section, section five. So we move on with our fourth rider of the night here in Extra Landora La Vella, 2023. And it's Benoit Bincaz, currently sixth in the championship standings. Chasing his first podium since Bilbao 2020. Still not fully fit from ankle and back injuries that have hampered this season so far. Vincas sixth in Barcelona and Wiener Neustadt, his best results. Sits in the same position in the championship as we've said. 13 points from the four rounds thus far for the lone Frenchman in the field, Bruno Vincas. And Schoko in the field as well. He's been struggling with mechanical difficulties this season. His summer campaign never really got going as a result. He has always been stronger in X-Trial, as we said earlier on. And fifth place overall in 2023 will certainly be his target. Bernard Binkas. Big first two steps. Big confident start from Bernard Binkas. Lands it on the sump. So Mark for leaning. Best score of anyone in this section one thus far, Matteo Grattarola with two marks. Second step that uh, cost Grattarola coming up here. Annie Ojelabek scored a three mark tally in section one. Let's see what Benoit Binkaz will do. He too lands it on the sub, so another mark for leaning for Benoit Binkaz. Two marks, still the best score of anyone in this opening section. Binkaz just making sure there. It's a two mark score in section one. Solid start then for Bernard Binkaz. There will be riders who are going to try and do that section without taking the marks for leaning. Give themselves a bit of an advantage, make the point of difference in terms of the scoring. Binkaz then on two after his first ride. Now straight on to section two. Gratarola and Aniel Jalabert both scoring a single mark in this one. Bernard Vincaz just being positioned by his assistant, telling him where to make the landing. And Bernard Vincaz lands a first clean in section two. Nicely done by the Frenchman. Rattarola and Jellabert both taking a single mark there. So Binkaz with the early advantage. Makes a slight error there though in section three. Did he get away with that one? Certainly looks like it. Took out one of the uh, section's lights. I wondered whether he might just have caught the edge of the sump, but the observer hasn't given it. So Jordi Sanchez happy with what he's seen. Section three, nobody has got through this one so far. Green, Gratarola, Jellabert, all failing here. 
the riders who make it through to the podium. And the grand final unlikely to commit too many of those kinds of errors. Three failures for Matteo Grattarola. A few fans uh, chanting for Big Kaz in French there. As he makes it up successfully. Closing in on the end of this section three. Tricky turn to do now for Benoit Binkaz, but uh, part of the section that's caught out his rivals has been successfully completed. Binkaz with the turn, with the landing. Left foot was out there off the bike. Don't think it touched the section though. And it is a clean for Benoit Binkaz in section three. Back to back cleans. Confident start to X Trials return for Binkaz. It's more like it from him. Miserable start to this season. Into section four. First step on that one has been the problem so far. Binkaz has made it through there, but he's got his uh, bike in an awkward spot now, hasn't he? Uses his left foot to haul the bike up, but there's no run up at all to try and make that step. And I don't think Binkaz is going to make it too much further here in section four. I'd love to be proved wrong because it will be very spectacular if he can pull this off. Trying to force the bike down. And right up the side of this one. And nope, he is down to a five. Fourth consecutive rider to fail section four. Don't see many riders get out of a tight spot like that one, but Binkaz getting further than his three rivals had in that section. And he still has over a minute to complete section five. Great to see this tower section back this year as well again fans on that side of the arena with a brilliant view of it. Couldn't be much closer to touching the riders almost there. Time counting down now. Less than a minute. Now what approach does he take? Green and Gratarola tried to take each of the four steps individually. Aniel Jelabert preferred to shoot halfway up and then just muscle his way up the last two. Jelabert's going to take the uh, sorry, Binkaz is going to take the Jella Bear approach. So one mark, two marks for footing. Is that going to be enough to get Binkaz home? Looks like it. Two marks for Benoit Binkaz then in section five. Nine marks scored. Seven clear of Aniol Jella Bear. Nine clear of Matteo Gratarola. That's a good run from Benoit Binkaz. He'll be happy with that. Failure in section four, but the three other riders had failed that one as well. Best of anyone in section two. First rider clean through there. First rider to complete section three and does so clean. And joint best score in section five along with Aniel Jalabert. So a lot of cause for optimism for Bernard Binkaz. Long way to go though to challenge for a place on the podium. Binkaz nine, Jalabert 16, Gratarola 18, 25. Here's his fellow countryman, Toby Martin. Two big steps to open us up. Open us up. Two marks apiece for Matteo Gratarolo and Benoit Binkaz. The best scores through here. Single mark for leaning on the step there for Martin. What about the second step? Everyone's needed a mark to get through this one as well. Here goes. Martin two takes a mark for leaning. That's two marks. Same score as Binkaz and Grasarola, far from disastrous. Toby Martin. Section two clean by Bernard Binkaz last time out. Can Martin do the same? It's about the tough start to the section. It's a short one. But it's an uneven surface. Sort of cylindrical shape to get us underway. And then you've got to use that as your ramp towards those eight frames. That's the first. And now we'll see what he can do with the turn. Binkaz did this nicely. Martin takes a mark for footing. Right foot goes down. Not out of the woods just yet in section two. Still one step to come. 
And he's made it successfully, so it's three marks from two sections, one behind for Nobin Kaz. Martin will either need to do something special in section five or four to move in front of the Frenchman. Section three next up for Toby Martin. Three little islands to bounce his way through in order. Now the main step, section three. Cleaned by Benoit Binkaz. Martin's assistant, Alex Wig, at the highest point of this section, giving Martin an indication of where to direct himself. The Montessa man is up. Oh! oh. And it's a big spill late in the section for Toby Martin. Got himself into difficulty, landed on the sub, took him up for footing. Tried to just scramble away and see if he could ride through with a little bit of good fortune to the end of the section, but he's out of it. So it's eight marks now for Toby Martin. And remember, Bruno Binkaz finished on nine. Martin could do with getting through this challenging section four. He's up. Good start to section four for Toby Martin. It's going to be one for leaning, one for footing. Right foot still down for Toby Martin, just using it to turn the bike. But he's not in the same awkward situation as Benoit Binkaz before him. How does he go about this from here? Binkaz had to drop down into that gap and found it too narrow to proceed. Martin's collecting himself for a big leap. Then overreaches slightly. Will have taken a mark there, so any further drop marks will be a fiasco in section four for Toby Martin. But Toby Martin is the first rider to successfully complete section four in Andorra La Vella's opening run tonight. 11 marks to score, so he's dropped behind for Robin Kaz. He will finish at least level on marks with Annie Olgelaber, and if he can get through this one as well, he slots in between the Frenchman and the Catalan. Toby Martin, 11 marks. Five here, of course, would be a maximum time penalty as well. That's going to be two marks. That's much earlier in the section than anyone else has uh, dropped their marks. So perhaps Martin overthinking what was yet to come. Now he has to be careful. Two marks already in section five. Jella Bear and Binkaz, the best performers in this section, also scored two. Is Martin going to drop down? Yes, he is. Takes it sideways. And now he's going to have to do these steps one at a time. He's got 50 seconds. Time is not the issue here. They're short sections. Brilliant ride from Toby Martin in section four, reminding us what he's all about. But it is a failure in section five. And goodness me, he was perilously close to the edge, perilously close to the edge of uh, the tower there. So it's a 16 mark score for Toby Martin. He drops behind both Benoit Binkaz and Annie Olgelabert because it will be a maximum time penalty for a five mark score in that section five. So Benoit Binkaz leads on nine, Annie Olgelabert second on 16, Toby Martin third on 16, Matteo Grassarola on 18, Billy Green 25. Four riders still to come and it's the big four in the championship. Adam Racker, Gabriel Marseille, Jaime Busto, and Tony Bowe still to come. Remember, World Championship points on offer for the lowest scoring rider in each run. So round number one of this extra Landora La Vella for 2023, Adam Racker. As I said earlier, 2023 will be his final season with TRS. In their statement, the manufacturer commented they would be focusing on work with the new generation of riders. Adam's own announcement said he'd hoped to continue with TRS until he felt he was ready for retirement. But speaking to him in the pits before today's event, says he is looking for a new ride for 2024. But of course, it needs to be the right team, the right offer to stop him from retiring, which would be a shame given the level at which he is still riding. Adam Ragger fourth in the World Championship standings. Just one point back from Gabriel Marseille. There's a bit of a battle for bronze. Oh, bad start for Adam Ragger in section one. He falls. Made the first step easily enough, but never really had much reach on the second. And down goes Ragger. So into section two. 
Adam Ragger already up against it. Remember, Bunar Bin Kaz finished his entire run on nine. Ragger needs to collect himself now. Experienced campaigner, 41 years of age. All-time appearance record holder. This is uh, appearance number 147 tonight for Adam Ragger. Most of them, he's finished on the podium, chasing number 125 this evening. Section two. He's through there clean, steadying his nerves. Second rider clean through that section. But the target is Bunnell on being Kaz. And Ragger can now afford a maximum of three marks to remain above being Kaz in the seeding order for round two. So three marks to play with for Ragger to remain in the lead of this round one. And I'll say Yibusto and Bo remember still to come. Target is to remain inside the top three positions. Already in round one, that looks like a bit of a stretch given that uh, section one performance. What about section three? Clean by Bunar Bin Kaz. The other four riders to attempt it have failed. Maga needs to get this one right. Gets the front wheel caught at the first attempt. Bridges, though, to that A-frame. Now he can try and use that to run up to the highest point in, in Section 3. Pulls himself back for the run-up. Here he goes. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Adam Ragger at the second attempt. Makes it through the main step of Section 3. He's got himself in a bit of a pickle later on in the section. Uses the sub to turn. And it will be that single mark for leaning that is his only score in section three. So Ragger now on to six marks. And remember, Bunuan Bin Kaz was on two at the same stage, finished on nine. Two sections still to come. Both have been completed. Section four, Toby Martin showed the way. Section five, Jella Ben Bin Kaz both got through on that one. Ragger needs to be best of anyone in these final two to remain in contention, you fancy, already at this stage. Mark for leaning and a mark for footing on that uh, first step for Adam Ragger. So he now moves on to eight. Any further drop marks, and there it is. Left foot goes down. Bernard Bin Kaz moves in front of Adam Ragger. And any further drop marks in this section four will be a failure for Ragger. Danger zone for the veteran. Former four times world champion. But he is the second rider home through in section four. Moves on to nine marks. Same score as Benoit Binkaz. But Binkaz with the advantage of the earlier starting position. And Adam Ragger with a section still to complete. Adam Ragger into section five. One minute still on the clock. Toby Martin got himself caught quite early in this one. Adam Ragger, I'm sure, will take this quite literally step by step. So he goes to the bottom of the staircase. He's going to try and take them perhaps one by one here. More than capable on the back tyre is Adam Ragger. He'll be frustrated about that section one performance because elsewhere it's been a decent run for him. Errant mark in section three, one more than Bunuar Bin Kaz through there. Section one making the main difference thus far. There's Mark for leading for Adam Ragger. He's through section five and a decent recovery in the end after a five mark score in section one. Ragger only scores five more marks in the remaining four sections. And that section one failure, first section of our return from a six month break and a failure for Ragger that may well prompt him a place in the podium positions tonight. That of course remains to be seen, but for the moment, it's Bunra Bin Kaz who leads in round one of X-Trial Andorra La Vella. Bunra Bin Kaz on nine, Adam Ragger on 10. Aniel Jalabert and Toby Martin, 16 apiece. Matteo Grasarola, 18. Billy Green, 25. That second block. So Bunua Bin Kaz first out. Two cleans in section four.
all completed successfully by Toby Martin, but he failed too, section three and five. Adam Bracker, crucial failure in section one. Left him chasing his tail rather for the remainder of round one. Clean though in section two, second rider clean through there. Single dab in section three and five. Best of anyone through section five for Raga. And a three mark score in section four. So 10 marks from five sections, not a bad effort, but not what you might expect will be podium pace for Adam Raga, who trails Bruno Bin Kaus by a single mark, still right in contention. Three riders though still to come in round one. Top three in the current World Championship standings then in this final block of the opening round. Gabriel Marseille first out of them. Third in the championship standings on 46 points. Adam Raga on 45. Remember a World Championship points available for the top performer in round one tonight. Marseille in turn 13 points back from Jaime Busto. Had a bad round at extra Bordeaux just before the summer break that's dropped him back into the clutches of Adam Racker, who was second that night in France. But that could well be a drop score for Gabriel Marseille. So, come the end of the season, he's still in contention for higher honours. Repsol Honda trial team chasing a 1-2 in 2023 with Tony Bo leading the championship standings. Gabriel Marseille then, the Galician. Five times podium finisher in extra trial events. Section one, failed by Adam Raga, by Billy Green before him. Marseille is up, what a super leap. And he's the first rider clean on that opening step. Could be Marseille then taking an early advantage. Massive height he had on that first step, brilliant ride. Another crate here that's caught riders out, just on the edge of it. It will be a mark for leading for Marseille through there, so still we wait for our first clean rider in section one. But it is the best score of anyone so far. And where Adam Raga, his main rival in the championship this season, scored five marks, Gabriel Marseille walks away with just one in section one. Now over to section two. Cleaned by Bruno Bincaz and Adam Raga. Single mark scores for Gratarola, Jelabert and Martin. On paper, one of the easier sections. Marseille will hope to do this one clean. Just to maintain that four mark advantage over Adam Raga. Montessa mounted Gabriel Marseille. There'll be a mark for leaning there just bounces down on the sump as he makes his way through to the end of the section. So it's two from two, same score as Bernard being passed at the same stage. Three marks better than Adam Racker through the first two sections. Section three up next. Four riders no less have failed this one. Two main steps coming up. And then that turn that caught out Adam Raga for his only drop mark. We know that Marseille for the big steps, for the big moments of explosive power, is much like a mini Tony Bow in that sense. Marseille will hope to power up through these. Bincaz, remember, was clean through here. Marseille on the same score at the same stage. Up goes Gabriel Marseille. Lands it nicely the other side as well. Now the turn and through to the exit gate. Remember, riders this season must cross the exit gate with the whole bike before they finish the section. So any awkward landings will count against him. Oh, and it is an awkward landing. It's down for a five for Gabriel Marseille. A surprise there because he'd done the hard work in that section. Now finds himself needing a big performance in the remaining two sections. A mark behind where Adam Racker was at the same stage all of a sudden for Gabriel Marseille. That's the mark he scored in section two. 
Good first step from Marseille. Braga finished his run on 10. Marseille is on seven. One mark given, left foot down. So just the one dab thus far. Braga scored three, Martin scored three. The only two riders to have made it through section four thus far. Marseille though well on course. Brilliant ride from Gabriel Marseille in section four of this opening round that gets his night back on track. Eight marks from four. Still leads in round one. Only just. One mark to play with against Bruno Vincaz. Marseille is clean up through here. He will beat Vincaz. If he scores one mark, it'll be a tie break on time between the two of them. Section five. Diligent work thus far for Marseille, still with a minute to go. Bidding to become the first rider clean through section five, Gabriel Marseille. Podium finisher at Barcelona and Pamplona. Will be guaranteed to be top three after round one if he can ride clean through here. Time starting to tick away, so that metric might count against him should he drop a mark through these final four steps. Here we go. Big finish for Gabriel Marseille. Jumps back down. And I think he's still clean as well. Less than 20 seconds, though. Gabriel Marseille. Brilliant performance from him. Gabriel Marseille maintains the lead in round number one of Extra Landora La Villa. First rider clean through section five. It's an eight mark opening run. Marseille leads but not being cast by a mark. Two ahead of Adam Raga. But it's tight at the top. And assuming that Gusto and Bo are also in podium contention, we're going to have a group of five riders there right in the mix for the second round. Martin, Gelabert, Graterola, Green, a little bit cut off at the bottom of the standings. Six mark gap between Raga and uh, Gelabert. Jaime Busto then next up. of Extra Landora La Vella in 2022. Takes a single dab on the first step. Second step now. Everyone's needed a mark for leaning on this one. And Busto is no exception. Two marks then to his name. But he is through in section one. Section two, cleaned by two riders, Bernard Bincaz and Adam Raga. Single dab for Gratarola, Jella Bear, Martin and Marseille. Statistically the easiest of the sections thus far tonight. Busto making very light work of it as well. Lands nicely. Looking good to become the third rider clean through here. He was close to the sub on that final step, but he's gone up. Clean in section two for Jaime Busto. Back square with Vincaz and Marseille at the same stage. Three sections still to come. Maximum of five marks to play with to finish clear of Gabriel Marseille. And put some pressure on Tony Bow for the first World Championship points to be distributed this evening. Section three. Two big steps here. I'm a busto. He's up. Now, what about the turn? This is where Gabriel Marseille, you got it wrong. Busto, we know, will have one eye on Tony Bow, Keeping his score as low as possible. 
to fight Poe for this World Championship point. Brilliant landing from Busto. Time on his side to get the exit gate right. Clean in section three for Jaime Busto, taking his time at the end of that one. Where impatience was his hallmark earlier in his career. Jaime Busto with the first step of section four successfully completed. Nobody's been clean through this one so far. Gabriel Marseille, single mark last time out. Notice the score has been updated to say a single mark for Jaime Busto in section one. Very confident start then for him and looking in control. Brilliant clean in section four for Jaime Busto. He remains on one mark. He will be at least second in this round one. And with that kind of score, this is going to heap an awful lot of pressure on Tony Bow. In the case of a tie between them, it would be time. Unless they both fail section five, that would distinguish between the two of them. Busto then, efficient thus far. Four steps to come. Very close to a mark for leaning, but just about okay, Jaime Busto. At the bottom of that uh, short staircase, one and a half minutes still on the clock. 90 seconds for Jaime Busto. And he's up. It's a clean for Busto in section five. A brilliant run. Just a single mark to his name. That is seven marks better than Gabriel Marseille. Jaime Busto takes the lead of extra Landor and Levella and heats the pressure onto Tony Bow ahead of his first run. Bow is up next. Got to be clean if he wants to beat Busto. That's or he'll be looking at the time. Busto certainly had plenty of time in his pocket. Tony Bow. Great helmet to design for Bow. Reminding everyone who the boss is. Reigning world champion, Tony Bow. Had a chat with him earlier today. Said there have been a very few changes to the Repsol Honda team setup since uh, those that they brought for Pamplona. Just a few updates to electronics for Tony Bow. Did make some interesting comments about mapping for the altitude in Andorra. Of course, Bo knows all about that. He lives and trains in the Principality. Very much a home round here for Tony Bow. Single mark for leaning on the first step of section one. Any further drop marks and he'll go behind Jaime Busto. And it has now been given. Initially, the observer didn't give it, but the referee has spoken to him, and it's moved to a two-mark score for Tony Bow. Jaime Busto wins round one and takes a world championship point, narrowing the gap to 19 points overall. Now it's just about qualifying at the end of the first two rounds for the grand final. So Bo just aiming to keep his score as low as possible as he makes his way through. Section two completed with a clean. Fourth rider to do so. Section three now, only two riders clean through this one. Bo on two marks. With a six mark lead over teammate Gabriel Marseille. So five marks to play with to avoid a tie break. Marseille was clean in that section five. Section three for Tony Bow. Here's the turn. Elegant work as ever from the world champion. Back to back cleans for Tony Bow. Still two marks. Now only two sections to come. Section four. Jaime Busto is clean through here. Tony Bow laboring. First step 
and he takes a mark for leaning. Now he takes a mark for footing as well, has to gather his balance. So that moves him on to a four mark score. Three back from Busto. Four ahead still of Gabriel Marseille. An ultimate section of round one. Bo earning the applause here. Two marks in section four. Four marks. A score with one to go. Tony Bo. Failure here would leave him behind teammate Gabriel Marseille and tied with Bernard Bincaz. Anything better than that, and he would be second to Jaime Busto in this opening round. Ask for the support of the home crowd, Tony Bow, as he makes his way through the section. Last ride of the opening round in Extra Andorra La Vella for 2023. Home man Tony Bow is the third consecutive rider home clean. Four mark run from Bow. Not the start he was targeting. Jaime Busto takes first blood in extra lap for La Villa. Well, in the end, whether it was a single mark score or a two mark score for Jaime Busto in section one matters little. Tony Bow scores four. Two drop marks in section one, two drop marks in section four. So Busto takes the first world championship point of the night. Tony Bow second on four marks. Gabriel Marseille occupies the last of the provisional podium places. Still another five sections to come in round number two. And behind Marseille, just a point back for Norbin Kaz, two points back Adam Raga. So it is going to be very close through the second run this evening. Brilliant ride from Jaime Busto. Four cleans back to back to end his ride. And Tony Bow had already dropped more marks than in Busto's five sections, just in his opening ride. Confident start for Busto. This is the kind of performance we've seen from him on occasion. One around uh, bonus points in Barcelona. Bonus points in Pamplona, bonus points in Bordeaux as well. It's actually only 4-3 uh, down on Tony Bow for bonus points this season so far. It's just that Bo seems to have a little bit extra in reserve for the grand final. But again, the opening round goes the way of Jaime Busto with just a single mark. So not much to choose between the top five after the opening runs of Extra Andorra La Bella this evening. Just two points separating positions three to five. Marseille on eight, Vincas nine, Raga ten. Two clear leaders. It's first blood and a first world championship point of the evening to Jaime Busto, your early leader.